Disasters damage more than buildings, roads, and trees. Disasters shatter homes, dreams, and lives. For victims, surviving tragedy brings them face to face with the most difficult struggle of their lives. For local leaders, balancing the needs of the community with those of individuals coping with loss, uncertainty, and fear can be one of the most difficult aspects of public service. Working with the state, local, and volunteer agency partners, FEMA's Individual Assistance Program provides help for victims on the road to recovery. When we came back to the house, uh, there wasn't much that we could say. It was overwhelming. And really, I walked around in circles because it was so overwhelming. Everything I went to, you know, oh, can I save this? Nope, you know, and uh, I mean, that's everything we have. When a disaster moves from the emergency response to the recovery phase, FEMA's Individual Assistance Program offers aid designed to meet specific needs of individuals and families where insurance may fall short. While these programs provide a safety net for those without essential basics, it's important for leaders and victims to remember they will not replace every loss. One of the things that I as a mayor learned is that recovery does not mean restoring everybody back to normal. There will be, your life will be changed forever when you go through disaster. You will get the help you need from the federal and state agencies to a certain degree, but you as a person need to handle your own disaster. You need to be able to pull yourself out of it with assistance from state and federal. They will not pull you all the way out. There's no way that they can do this. It's part of our law that we don't duplicate what insurance provides. We want to work with people uh, to see what what may be available, um, even if they have insurance, but people need to know that we've got to keep insurance in mind and we'll look at their individual case to see if there is something that falls short, something where we may be able to help. The primary source of federal assistance for repairing and rebuilding damaged homes after a disaster comes in the form of low interest loans from the U.S. Small Business Administration. These loans are available to homeowners and renters, as well as businesses of all sizes. FEMA provides support in several forms. Assistance for individuals and households is a grant program covering housing needs and other basic necessities. These funds are provided to make repairs to a damaged home, apply toward purchase of a new home, or for lodging and rental expenses for those temporarily displaced. Other needs grants cover expenses for personal property, transportation, as well as medical, dental, and funeral costs. But before anyone can receive any federal assistance, they must call or go online at www.fema.gov to register with FEMA. Okay, starting right off the top, whether you're a homeowner, a renter, or a business, you need to give us a call at 1-800-621-FEMA. Did you call FEMA? You check back with her and make sure she's called for you now. Can you call me 800 You've got a, a, a phone number where people can register for disaster assistance. It is 800-621-FEMA. To be eligible to apply for a FEMA disaster assistance grant, applicants must reside in a county that has been declared a federal disaster area, must be a U.S. citizen, non-citizen national, or a qualified alien, Undocumented individuals can apply on behalf of their minor child who is a citizen, has a social security number, and lives with them. FEMA will send an inspector to the damaged home to verify damages. Applicants must provide proof that the damaged home was their primary residence and must have disaster-related costs not covered by insurance or other disaster assistance programs. Just as local leaders need to take charge in managing their community's recovery, each citizen must be responsible for managing their personal disaster recovery. Individual assistance is just what it says. It's assistance for the individual, but it's not total recovery for the individual. We have a lot of personal responsibility. We need to make sure that we have insurance to cover a lot of these costs. The federal government has strict guidelines as to what's provided during individual assistance. And we try to educate our public on what may or may not occur. Yes, there are people who are not going to have the wherewithal uh, nor maybe the uh, inclination you know, to be as prepared as the next guy. Our job is to make sure that as many people as possible uh, understand the need to be self-sufficient and self-reliant in a post-disaster setting. To effectively deliver assistance, FEMA needs the proactive help of everyone on the local team. Emergency management 
is not a person or an office or a big federal bureaucracy. It's a mindset that a community has got to adopt and they've got to be very, very, you know, they've got to be so serious about it and they've got to work at it. You can't just say, oh yeah, well that stuff happens. No, it doesn't. There's work involved. And it's partnerships between media, business and industry, private volunteer organizations, and everybody's got to be a player and everybody's got to have a buy-in because if they don't, then you're going to fail. And you're going to, as I said, you'll pay a heavy price someday. The responsibilities of leaders and officials include learning about disaster assistance programs and processes, providing accurate information to the public about the programs, working with federal and state officials to identify locations for disaster recovery centers and temporary housing sites, and managing the expectations of the public, their employees, and various partners. Managing expectations is probably the biggest challenge anyone in a, in a, in a policy making or an elected official position is going to face after, after a major emergency, whether it be a hurricane, a major flood, you know, a tornado, is managing people's expectations. Put the public face out there and let it be uh, preferably one of the elected officials, if we're talking about elective offices, as opposed to just a spokesperson. The education of the public is probably the, the thing I harp on more than anything else. You know, don't be a stranger to your public. Let them know who your emergency management agency is. Let them know who you are. In 1997, Grand Forks, North Dakota was devastated by a historic flood. The damage reached over $1 billion. Thousands were evacuated. Homes and businesses destroyed and lives were forever changed. They called it a 225 year flood and uh, our entire city of 50,000 people were evacuated. Uh, it was, they said, also the largest evacuation of an American city since the Civil War, which was Atlanta, Georgia. So there's a couple of different ways we may uh, assist individuals, whether it be putting a travel trailer in a driveway so the person can stay at their home and make repairs, or it may be in uh, the form of developing some sort of a group site or emergency group site so people have a place to, to stay. In 2004, Hurricane Charlie was the first Category 4 hurricane to hit Charlotte County, Florida. You need to be prepared uh, to deal with this housing issue because should you lose 95% of your public housing, as we did in the city of Punta Gorda, then you've got a major crisis on your hand. If someone came to you tomorrow and said, we need to build a 551 unit mobile home park, where can you put it? You better have a place. You better have some county owned land or you better be able to get your hands on some because it's got to happen or you've got major problems in terms of housing uh, those folks that have no place else to go. When I talk about it now, it just seems unreal that we were able to come through it. Uh, but through cooperation of many, many people and many different agencies, federal, state, and local, we were able to uh, rebuild and come out of it uh, probably better than we were before it actually happened. It is imperative that we have a teamwork, a partnership, a unified approach to all disasters and one key thing is that the local officials are never going to be alone. If they're only a phone call away and they can build those relationships before the event and therefore when the event happens things can go a lot more efficiently.